Hollywood, Mr. and Mrs. Audience. Hollywood, the magical mecca, movie land. Fountainhead of the celluloid fantasies whose shining shadows flicker around the full circumference of our troubled world. Hollywood, where science and sorcery combine to brew their magic broth of thrills and chills, of laughter and tears, for audiences like you totaling 250 million people a week. For it is to you, Mr. and Mrs. Audience, that all Hollywood is dedicated. For you, little Tommy Ticket Buyer, do some 70,000 Hollywood workers exert their labors, their brains, their witchcraft. But I wonder, little Mary Matinee, if you know who is most sought after in all the busy bedlam of Hollywood. Of course, highly advantageous to know is the cameraman and eagerly besieged for favor is the director. Hungrily desired is any association with the glamorous stars. Most respectfully regarded is the writer. But not even one of these is Hollywood's most coveted personality. There is another whose fame and importance transcend all else in Hollywood. Who? I. I am the most frantically sought person in cinema land. I, Oscar, the Academy Award. True, I'm only a metal statuette, intrinsically worth but a few dollars. But money cannot buy me. I must be earned. The reward for outstanding merit. They tell me I'm only 13 years old, but that's a falsehood. I was born perhaps 10 million years ago, when primitive man first began his epic march to nowadays. For I am progress. I am achievement. I am that recognition of achievement for which mankind will always strive, so long as he is a very human mankind. And I am also you, Mr. and Mrs. Audience, you who demand and receive each year finer and finer entertainment on the silver screen. My present incarnation began in the year 1927, when the creative minds of Hollywood, fulfilling a long-felt desire, conceived through the Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Sciences a plan to honor, through me, the progress of their fellow workers, the birth of the now world-famous Academy Awards. Next. Thank you very much, Mr. Cobb. Mommy, can I go home now? <laughs> <laughs> For whistling while he worked his myriad wonders with Snow White, Hollywood's marvelous master of whimsy, Walt Disney, receives not only me, but seven little Oscarettes. The 1938 Irving Thalberg Award was presented to Hal Wallace, significant of his consistent production achievements. But who's this? Can it be? Yes, George Bernard Shaw, the whiskered lion of literature, calls me with his dulcet words to cross the Atlantic and tell him we voted Pygmalion, a great screen story. 1939, and now we prepare our vote for the past year. Already more than 12,000 votes have been received. Votes by artists and artisans, stars and technicians alike, from all the manifold activities of Hollywood. Votes counted and recorded in the strictest privacy by public accountants. And Hollywood talks of little else as the evening approaches. The Academy dinner. Come with me, Mr. and Mrs. Audience, and you, Tommy, and Mary, too, to the Coconut Grove in the Ambassador Hotel. See for yourself, and be conscious, as I am, of the outstanding mood of this brilliant gathering. Suspense. Who will win the Academy Awards? The tension grows and grows. Little else is thought of, little else discussed. For not one whisper of Hollywood's choices has been allowed to escape. Everybody's here, everybody's curious, covetous, envious perhaps, but excited, for dearly cherished is the recognition by our fellow workers of our efforts. Remember, I am Oscar, the ultimate glory in Hollywood success. Yes, everybody's here, tall, bashful James Stewart and a lovely girl. The quite fabulous Mr. Charles Lawton with his distinguished wife, Elsa Lanchester. Revered Gene Herschel and his missus, torn tonight from his fireside in first edition. Did you ask for glamour, Mr. and Mrs. Audience? Well, Hedy Lamar is here, but darn it, with her husband, Jean Markey. Melvin Douglas, Helen Gehagen, Irving Pitchell. Everybody? You bet everybody. Scarlett O'Hara, her glorious self, Vivian Lee, escorted by producer David Selznick. Of course, I don't have to tell you that this is dear old May Robeson, one of the youngest of them all, or that this is one of the loveliest, Olivia de Havilland, escorted by John Hay Whitney. Naturally, the press is well and brilliantly represented. Famed Luella Parsons and her husband, Dr. Harry Martin. Hedda Hopper, actress columnist, beaming in her own gracious person and with her, John Carroll. Comes Jack Warner, youngest of the Warner clan. And then the senior member of the film-famed brothers, Harry Warner. Look, Andy Hardy, sweetheart, Ann Rutherford, and not with Andy, scandal. Blonde, lovely Virginia Bruce. And her husband, producer J. Walter Rubin. Distinguished scion of distinguished father, Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. But here's Elsa Maxwell, start the party, folks. Now everything's ready to go. But who's going to win? Vivian Lee and Laurence Olivier wonder with me. 
So do Mickey Rooney and MGM's E.J. Mannix. Gorgeous heady eyes that table crowded with my gleaming offspring. And with Judy Garland, Norma Shearer, and George Raft, anxiously awaits the Academy's momentous decisions. Everybody is here tonight, stars and starlets, executives and electricians, workers and writers, technicians and telephone girls, engineers and extras, directors and designers, everybody in movie land, watching, waiting, wondering who will win me Oscar for 1939. Meanwhile, in another part of the Ambassador Hotel, I, Oscar, am let in on a secret. In a guarded press room, newspaper representatives from the whole world await. As to the new president, Walter Wanger, come envelopes containing the names of this year's winners sealed envelopes to be opened only at a certain moment so that the folks back east may read the names of the proud new Oscar owners in their morning papers. But now back to the Coconut Grove and hurry for the retiring president, Frank Capra, is turning the gathering over to the incoming president, producer Walter Wanger. And now let's get right to it. The awards of 1939. First, the technical awards, which will be presented by the chairman of the Research Council and winner of last year's Thalberg Award, Mr. Darrell Zanuck. Mr. Zanuck deals out my glittering replicas in quick succession. To William Cameron Menzies for his outstanding use of color in Gone with the Wind. To Dr. Herbert T. Kelmus, president of Technicolor, a special Oscar for color development. To Hal Kern and James Newcomb for film editing, Gone with the Wind. To Ernest Haller, color cinematography, and the same to Ray Renahan, Gone with the Wind. To Bernard B. Brown, sound recording, When Tomorrow Comes. To Fred Serson for the special photographic effects, The Rains Came. To Lyle Wheeler for art direction, Gone with the Wind. To E.H. Hansen for those remarkable sound effects in The Rains Came. To Herbert Stothert for the best musical scoring, The Wizard of Oz. To Harold Arlen and E.Y. Harburg for the year's best song, Over the Rainbow from The Wizard of Oz. The next introduction is the return engagement by request of the Rhett Butler of the Air, Bob Hope. Thank you, President. Thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. I'm very happy to be here tonight. Anyway. <laughs> you know me, I'm just the man who came to dinner. <laughs> really, I think this is a wonderful thing, a benefit like this for David Selznick, and I want to tell you... I really had a sneaky idea that they were going to give me an Oscar tonight because I saw one of them with a surprise look here. <laughs> Aren't they beautiful? I feel like I'm in Bette Davis's living room. Now Bob Hope hands out fame and favor to supervising director Ham Lusk of Walt Disney Studios for The Ugly Duckling, to George Bagnell for Paramount Short, Busy Little Bears, for Warner Brothers' Sons of Liberty, producer Gordon Hollingshead accepts. And now comes Sinclair Lewis, famed American novelist, world-renowned Nobel Prize winner, to present me to Lewis R. Foster for the best original motion picture story, Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. And then Mr. Lewis speaks of the Oscar, which betokens the best screen adaptation. Gone with the Wind, the screenplay by Sidney Howard. <laughs> it is a tragedy that many of you who never knew him personally will realize that Sidney Howard cannot stand here tonight to receive that so amply justified award. Ladies and gentlemen, I have the pleasure now of presenting a young, young fellow that you all know that received the juvenile award last year. And I know he's probably one of the most popular, well, he is, I think, the biggest box office name in our industry. And uh, I call him the year's 10 best actor, Mr. Mickey Rooney, ladies and gentlemen. Members of the Academy, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, it's my privilege this year to present that award for the outstanding performance by a juvenile actress during the past year, Miss Judy Garland. Best Direction of 1939, I asked Mervyn Leroy to present me to Victor Fleming, the man who directed Gone with the Wind. 
I cannot accept this without paying tribute to those really responsible for much of the picture's success. The uh, crew behind the camera, to whom I am deeply grateful. Thanks. And then again a hush over the crowded coconut grove, at the mention of a name now but a warm and glowing memory, the name of Irving Thalberg, as Dr. Ernest Martin Hopkins, president of Dartmouth College, awards for 1939 the Irving G. Thalberg Memorial to producer David O. Selznick for consistent artistic achievement during the past year. The hush continues while to Douglas Fairbanks, Jr. goes a very special and honorary award given in deepest sympathy and gratitude to the family of the late Douglas Fairbanks. I'm sure you all realize how difficult it is for me to express myself adequately. You all know, I'm sure, how much my father loved motion pictures and all of you connected with it. To have been given this trophy, this reward, for his contributions to this industry would have made him exceedingly happy. Thank you. And here's Faye Bainter, a past winner herself, to present the two awards for supporting performances, performances without which the stars would sometimes shine not quite so brightly. First to Thomas Mitchell for his brilliant portrayal in Stagecoach. I didn't think I didn't know I was quite that good. <laughs> I'm really especially happy that I'm chosen to present this particular plaque. To me, it seems more than just a plaque of gold. It opens the doors of this room, moves back the walls, and it enables us to embrace the whole of America, an America that we love, an America that almost alone in the world today recognizes and pays tribute to those who give their best, regardless of creed, race, or color. It is with the knowledge that this entire nation will stand and salute the presentation of this plaque that I present the Academy Award for the best performance of an actress in supporting roles during 1939 to Hattie McDaniel. Academy of Motion Picture Arts and Science, fellow members of the motion picture industry and honored guests. This is one of the happiest moments of my life. And I want to thank each one of you who had a part in selecting me for one of the awards. For your kindness, it has made me feel very, very humble. And I shall always hold it as a beacon for anything that I may be able to do in the future. I sincerely hope I shall always be a credit to my race and to the motion picture industry. My heart is too full to tell you just how I feel. And may I say thank you and God bless you. Spencer Tracy, before announcing the award to 1939's foremost actor, lists those five best performances nominated for the honor. For the best performance by an actress, Robert Donat in Goodbye, Mr. Chips. Clark Gable, Gone with the Wind. Lawrence Olivier, In Wuthering Heights. Mickey Rooney, In Babes in Arms. And James Stewart, In Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. I feel sure that all of the nominees tonight and all of the Academy Award winners of past years join me in the great joy I feel in announcing this winner, Robert Donat. For the finest interpretation of 1939 by an actress, five brilliant performances were nominated. Betty Davis in Dark Victory. <laughs> uh, 
Irene Dunn in Love Affair. <laughs> Greta Garbo in The Nachka. <laughs> Greer Garson in Goodbye, Mr. Chips. <laughs> Vivian Lee in Gone with the Wind. Need I say, it is a privilege and an honor to announce this winner, Miss Vivian Lee in Gone. Ladies and gentlemen, please forgive me if my words are inadequate in thanking you for your very great kindness. If I were to mention all those who have shown me such wonderful generosity through Gone with the Wind, I should have to entertain you with an oration as long as Gone with the Wind itself. So, if I may, I should like to devote my thanks on this occasion to that composite figure of energy, courage, and very great kindness in whom all points of Gone with the Wind meet, Mr. David Selznick. And so ends 1939's Academy Awards Dinner. And so comes 1940. From my vantage point here in Hollywood, I can see my 70,000 workers, your workers, Mr. and Mrs. Audience, planning, scheming, hoping that next year I may shimmer shiningly in their hands. Which is as it should be, because while they get the Oscars, you, Mr. and Mrs. Audience, get better and better pictures.